ABC 7 Bangor. This is ABC 7 News at Noon. Hello everyone. Sheriff's deputies say they found the driver responsible for a crash that left a home in Abbott badly damaged. We'll have the story coming up. Plus, our newly inaugurated governor signs a bill that will help Mainers heat their homes this winter. And the latest from Washington, where lawmakers are still trying to select a House speaker after several failed votes. We'll have the latest on that as well. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Craig Colson, sitting in for Susan Farley today. We thank you for joining us for ABC 7 News at Noon. We'll get to those stories coming up. But first, a check of the forecast. We're off to a very icy start today. Um, here in the Bangor area, we had freezing rain and a little snow falling overnight, which created some very icy conditions this morning. Other areas simply seeing some snow. Lots of schools have closed for the day. Some are delaying their openings for the day. And it looks like a little more messy weather will be heading our way as well. Let's check in with Devin Biggs for the very latest. Hey Susan, happy Thursday afternoon. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Luigi and Fredericks. Across from Eastern Maine Medical Center, serving the greater Bangor area for over 65 years. Here we go. So we have advisories in effect. These are winter weather advisories up until about 5 o'clock later this afternoon because of snow and a winter mix that has been moving in. We also have the small cat advisory that's up until 1 p.m. on Friday, further down toward the south in some areas up until about 4 o'clock or so. So the expiration times may change depending on where you're at, though, as we'll be dealing with some active weather that continues to move in. And here it is right here, some snow some wintry mix that has been moving in. But notice here we're starting to get on the back edge of this now. So roads might be a little messy out there, but we'll catch a little bit of a break to allow those roads to recover a little bit here as we'll get, get that break in here. And a little bit more snow could try to develop later on this evening as well. Let's zoom things out at this point. This is really kind of arcing up with this area, a little pressure here. So we're going to keep this going today, a little bit of tonight as well, and a little bit of snow on the way tomorrow before we start to back things off just in time for the weekend. So here's the wind right here, mainly out of the northeast. Some gusts up to 15 miles per hour or higher can be ruled out. But notice the winds will start to back off just in time for your Friday. So future cast moving forward, there's some leftover snow, a few breaks from time to time, but a little bit more could try to develop later on this evening before another wave starts to move in as we head towards your Friday. Your hourly forecast for the rest of the afternoon period showing snow showers possible and a few breaks from time to time too. Temperatures in the 20s. The full five day forecast is coming up. Susan. All right, thank you, Devin. We need to tell him that Susan is off today. Well, in today's news, the main turnpike was the scene of a scary crash this morning. The Department of Public Safety says it happened in Kittery, about a mile from the border with New Hampshire. Officials say a 22-year-old man from Massachusetts was traveling south on the turnpike when his truck struck a fully loaded cement truck from behind. The driver, Manuel Gonzalez of Boston, had to be pried from the wreckage. He was transported to a hospital with serious but non-life-threatening injuries. 59-year-old Peter McDonald of South Berwick was driving the cement truck and was not injured. Police say their preliminary investigation leaves them to believe that Gonzalez was driving too fast and too close to the truck in front of him. The southbound turnpike has since been reopened to traffic. Meanwhile, the search has ended for a driver who crashed into a house in Abbott. The Piscataquis County Sheriff's Department says that person fled the scene and left that house badly damaged. Officials say it was around 440 Wednesday when they were called to that home on the main road. They say it appears the driver was traveling at a high rate of speed when the vehicle went off the road and slammed into the house. Fortunately, no one was there at the time and the couple who lives there made the discovery when they returned. By then, the driver had left the scene and deputies were turning to the public to help find the person. They say a preliminary investigation determined the vehicle might have been a 2014 to 2018 Jeep. And then to the Piscataquis County Sheriff's Department posted this morning that it had identified the driver of the vehicle, possibly because of all the help from the public. We'll have more information about that development as soon as it becomes available. Two people have been arrested in connection with what police are calling a large tool theft in Hancock County. The Ellsworth Police Department has been investigating a theft from a work site at the Mill Dam that happened around December 14th and also from a burglary that took place at a Bangor Road home, which happened on December 10th. They say more than $16,000 worth of tools and equipment were stolen during those incidents. 29-year-old Timothy Stanley of Bucksport is now being charged with burglary, theft, and violating of his bail connections in connection with that Bangor Road burglary. He was also summoned for theft for his alleged role in the Mill Dam theft. 
31-year-old Jacob Carney of Eastbrook is also being charged with theft for his alleged role in the theft of tools from the Mill Dam work site. Police say nearly all of the stolen items have been recovered and returned to their rightful owners. A Massachusetts man facing murder charges here in Maine entered a plea in court on Wednesday morning. Our Matthew Jaroncic with that story. Jorge Pagan Sanchez was arrested in December in connection with a murder that took place on November 4, 2022 in Machias. The Massachusetts native is one of four men facing a murder charge in the shooting of 17-year-old Brandon Guerrero of New York. Investigators learned that Emmanuel Ramos, Juan Ortiz, and Pagan Sanchez trafficked drugs from Massachusetts on Beale Street in Machias and set up a plan to kill and rob Guerrero of his drugs and money at the Machias Cemetery. Months later, residents of the tight-knit community are still on edge about the amount of drug cases occurring in town. I, I want to feel like I'm living in a safe community, and over the past few years, I've been seeing more and more of these, these drug cases that have been coming up where people have been getting murdered. And, and so I, I'm upset that this has taken place and that this is happening in our small community, and it shouldn't be. Appearing in court Wednesday, Pagan Sanchez faced felony murder and burglary charges. He pleaded guilty to all charges, each having a potential prison sentence of 30 years and a penalty of $50,000. Prior to these charges, Pagan Sanchez had a prior felony burglary charge for an attempted armed robbery in Massachusetts. Justice Bruce Maloney accepted the plea deal. Community members say they're being extra cautious in the town they call home. Lock your car doors. Don't leave your cars running outside before work and lock your home. Like, I know there's a lot of people that still love this area for being able to keep their doors unlocked at night, but we've got to start. There is no set date for when Pagan Sanchez will be sentenced. Reporting from Machias, Matthew Jaroncic, ABC7 and Fox 22. In other news this noon, the Penobscot County Sheriff's Office is investigating an inmate's death at the jail that they say may be due to a drug overdose. On Tuesday night at approximately 8.20, officers were alerted to an unresponsive male inmate. Despite their efforts and help from Bangor Fire and Rescue, they were unable to revive him. The sheriff's office says an early investigation indicates the medical event was not caused by any physical altercation between inmates or the staff and is now being investigated as a potential overdose death. That's according to the sheriff's office. No name is being released at this time pending notification of that inmate's family. Maine's Catholic Diocese is pushing back against several lawsuits claiming sexual abuse by priests against children for decades in Maine. Attorneys with Berman and Simmons say there are now 13 lawsuits against the diocese accusing priests and at least one nun of sexual abuse dating back to the 1950s. The legal action comes after Maine lifted its statute of limitations on sex crimes. Attorneys for the victims are releasing court documents from the diocese Motions to dismiss the lawsuits saying lifting the statute of limitations on alleged sex crimes is unconstitutional. It references that it wants the same protection as banks on page 20. On their motion, page 20, they said, quote, such destabilizing and arbitrary authority, end quote, was never given to the Maine legislature. They're saying the Maine legislature shouldn't be trusted. Well, in those court documents, the diocese argues it's the specific alleged perpetrators who should be to blame and not the diocese itself. Attorneys for the victims say the diocese is responsible for failing to keep the alleged victims away from known offenders. They filed a motion rebutting the legal action from the diocese and expect a decision in the weeks or possibly months ahead. Well, you could see a $450 check from the state in a matter of weeks. It's meant to help offset the high heating costs around the state. And it's part of an emergency heating relief plan, which the governor said was her first priority. Both the House and Senate passed the measure on Wednesday. And within the hour, the governor signed it into law. Brad Rogers has more. Well, with the bill now signed into law, eligible Mainers can expect to start receiving those $450 checks by mid-January. Once again, the House passed the Emergency Winter Energy Relief Plan by a wide margin, more than enough votes to pass the emergency measure. The Senate then narrowly got the two-thirds vote needed to pass the emergency measure, but not before debating the bill. Republican Senator Eric Brakey told members of the Senate, this bill is nothing but a crutch for the people of Maine. As far as crutches go, there are items in this bill I would gladly approve if they were standalone items. 
The bill also includes $40 million in home heating assistance and $10 million in emergency fuel assistance to help low-income Mainers. It also adds $21 million to the Emergency Housing Relief Fund aimed at preventing homelessness this winter. But Senator Jeff Timberlake says this money does nothing to fund drug treatment programs or increase reimbursements to home health agencies. Well, we didn't even discuss other options of ways that maybe we could fund the nursing homes in the state of Maine. Other Republicans don't understand why couples earning nearly $200,000 should qualify for these checks. If you think the cutoff should be $200,000 and that the person that makes $199 should qualify for these checks, I do not agree with that. But Democratic Senator Maddie Daughtry says what this emergency measure will do is help 77 families in her community now at risk of losing their homes. These are 77 people that I know when I vote today that I'm voting for them to make sure that they are able to not only have a roof over their heads but be able to stay warm. The bill provides $450 relief checks to roughly 880,000 Mainers. Couples who qualify get $900. And that was Brad Rogers reporting. Coming up on ABC 7 News at noon, we'll have a look back at last night's inauguration for Governor Janet Mills. And funeral services were held this morning for Pope Benedict. Those stories and more as ABC 7 News at noon continues. If you've been hurt in a car accident, watch out. Watch out. The insurance company may try to tell you that you don't need a lawyer. Call the twos and we'll watch out for you. Lowry & Associates watched out for me and got me $275,000. When the Granite Shop wants to know the weather on MDI, they log on to FoxBangor.com. At the Granite Shop in Sedgwick and in Trenton, we have more inventory than all other shops in the state combined. Fastest turnaround, too. When you're ready to tackle your next building project, no matter how big or small, depend on Hammond Lumber Company for the products and services you need. The knowledgeable staff at Hammond Lumber will be with you every step of the way and keep your project on schedule. From free estimating and project planning to design and drafting services, an extensive product inventory with a wide variety of brands to choose from, and of course, Hammond delivers from any of the locations across Maine and New Hampshire. Hammond Lumber Company, your building project partner. Whenever Maine Wood Floors wants to know the weather, they log on to foxbangor.com. Whether you're searching to add beauty with a new hardwood floor or need to restore your old one, Maine Wood Floors is your hardwood flooring expert in Midcoast, Maine. I heard a lot of screaming coming up my stairs. It was Roy, probably intoxicated. A defenseless aunt. So we broke the bedroom window of the house. What else do you think he vandalized? My car. Or a nephew under fire. I went over to her house to collect my money that she owed me. My aunt said, oh, you don't think we don't have no gun in here, Roy? And I'm like, what? I'm out of here. So I jump in my car. Before I can even turn my car around, bam, my back window shattered. Next Judge Judy. Thursday at 5, only on ABC7. This week, it's the wheel of indecision. I don't know. It's a tough call. No. So it's either spin or solve. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Plus, is Pat so put in his place? Over five thousand. I'm getting. You're not. Even, should I just shut up at this point? For one second. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Robin's appearing here all week. <laughs> Weekdays at seven on ABC Seven. There's more than one way to parent a child, but which way is best? You're so brave. You could say that again. <laughs> the Parent Test. New episodes starting tonight on ABC. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. Welcome back, everyone. Yesterday marked the official beginning of Governor Janet Mills' second term in office. The inauguration was held at the Augusta Civic Center, and our Devin Dagnall was there. Governor Janet Mills spoke at her second inauguration. In her speech, she welcomed a predominantly female legislature. Madam Secretary of State, Madam Speaker, Madam Chief Justice, I like the way this is going. She also focused on her accomplishments in the past. We provided universal free meals in the public schools. We provided free community college to recent high school grads. 
But throughout her speech, she focused on hope. Hope is not an easy thing. It's not mere wishful thinking. It's just trying to, not just trying to do what we did yesterday in the same old, same old way. Hope is disruptive. It is, after all, a four-letter word. It, it challenges and changes the way we do things, and it calls on us to advance and adapt while preserving everything we are as a people and all the values we hold dear. And more than ever before, because of everything we have been through and because of everything we are, hope resides here in Maine. That was Devin Dagnall reporting. Now the festivities will continue today. They're going to be having a big ball down there in Augusta. That one is not open to the public, but we will certainly have coverage of that later on on ABC 7. Well, health care systems around the country are having a hard time bouncing back from the pandemic, and Northern Light Health is no exception. Changes are being put into place as the system tries to recover. The system runs 10 hospitals around the state, and in early December, Northern Light announced Quest Diagnostics would manage nine of Northern Light Health's hospital labs, as well as the lab at Northern Light Cancer Care in Brewer. Northern Light Eastern Maine Medical Center closed its Orono primary care practice as of January 1st. On Monday, the system announced it is also temporarily reducing hours at the walk-in care location on Union Street in Bangor while they continue to restructure the care model. They do plan to resume seven-day-a-week service there later on this winter. Now, we just received word uh, that some other things are happening at Northern Light today. In fact, if you come back to me at this point, if you want, this press release was just handed to me from there. They were apparently having some meetings today, and they are doing some more restructuring. I'll just read you the first sentence of this. It says, Northern Light Health and Optum today announced a strategic relationship to enhance the health care experience for patients and providers throughout Maine. As part of this relationship, select Northern Light Health employees will now become part of Optum, providing them with new opportunities for growth and career advance, advancement while they continue to support Northern Light Health. So it looks like Optum is going to be taking over. Um, they'll basically be the boss of some Northern Light employees from here on out. We will digest this information and try to figure out exactly what it means for you and what it means for the workers, and we'll have more on that coming up. All right, right now, though, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll tell you about the Pope's funeral service held this morning along with other news going down in Washington. Get a little bit of chaos going on there. Don't go away. If you've been hurt in a car accident, watch out. If you wait too long to hire a lawyer, it may hurt your case. Call the twos and we'll watch out for you. Lowry and Associates watched out for me and got me $150,000. At Living Innovations, we build community. You can be a part of it. We put supporting people first, and that builds a caring community within our workforce and for the people we serve. Living Innovation supports people with disabilities and has flexible work opportunities available. You could become a shared living provider and work from home or help support people to be active in the community. To learn more, visit livinginnovations.com and check out our employment and home provider opportunities. Become a part of Living Innovations and be part of a community with a purpose. When Rowell's Garage in Dover Foxcroft wants to know the local forecast, they log on to foxbangor.com. Rowell's Garage has been serving customers in the greater Dover Foxcroft region since 1946. Our goal is not just selling you a vehicle, but also giving you quality service to maintain your vehicle at peak performance. This week, Happy New Year to all. Super champion Ray Lalonde is on a streak into 2023 with 12 wins. Ray Lalonde survives yet another scare. And over $350,000. Let's do a true daily double. All of it at stake. Now, can he put together another streak week? Everybody's off to a great start. Next Jeopardy. All this week at 7.30, only on ABC7. Parenting. Sometimes there's success. You got it, girl. And other times... I want to encourage you to try it. Nope. I am a high-achievement parent. But our parenting style is strict with morals. You can obviously see the love. I wish I had a dad like them. You should see us cook, though. <laughs> the Parent Test. New episodes starting tonight, 9, 8 central on ABC. For the first half of his life, Ed Bushy hid his inability to read from everyone until a crisis led him to confront his secret. So he called literacy volunteers at Bangor. He got a tutor and he learned to read. For the rest of his life, Ed promoted literacy to anyone who would listen. 
Ed's granddaughter, Kayla, was listening. Her grandfather's story inspired her to volunteer as a literacy tutor. Like Kayla, you can help us reach and teach people like Ed. The need is great, especially now. Become a tutor with Literacy Volunteers today. Pope Emeritus Benedict was laid to rest this morning following a funeral service attended by thousands. The German theologian made history when he became the first pope this to resign morning, because of declining health. He passed away over the weekend at the age of 95. Today, he was eulogized by his successor, Pope Francis. It was the first time in modern history a current pope eulogized a retired pope. He's going to re be remembered as one of the greatest intellects in the history of the church, which is saying something in 2,000 years. Now, following the funeral service in St. Peter's Square, Pope Benedict's coffin was transported through the basilica to the crypts below the Vatican. His final resting place will be the first tomb of Pope John Paul II, which was vacated when John Paul became a saint and was moved to a chapel inside the basilica. Now, developments overnight on Capitol Hill. Kevin McCarthy is reportedly offering new concessions after losing a sixth vote for House Speaker. And because of the gridlock, no members of the House have been sworn in. That means there are zero members of the House of Representatives right now. ABC's M. Nguyen has more. Overnight, sources say Kevin McCarthy offered key new concessions, hoping to sway far-right Republican holdouts to cast their vote for him as Speaker, a vote he's now lost six consecutive times. Sources say the concessions include a rule change that would allow one member of the House to call for a vote to oust the future Speaker, down from the original five members required by a previous deal. Another concession on the table, putting more members of the House Freedom Caucus on the powerful House Rules Committee. And a promise to a vote on bills that conservatives have been pushing on border security and term limits for House members. However, even with those concessions, sources say McCarthy is still unlikely to have the votes needed to secure the Speaker's gavel. The House stands adjourned until noon tomorrow. Last night, the House agreed to adjourn instead of holding another vote, giving McCarthy more time to make deals. But in what's likely a sign of things to come in the narrowly divided House, even the vote to adjourn was a nail-biter, with four far-right Republicans joining all Democrats in voting against adjourning. Some Republicans now say this isn't so much about McCarthy as it is about not bending to the will of a small minority. I don't think uh, the vast majority of pro-McCarthy Republicans uh, in the Congress really think it's just about Kevin McCarthy. This is about making sure that we do not reward dysfunction. President Biden knocked Republicans, calling it embarrassing that the vote was taking so long. This is not a good look, and I hope they get their act together. The House is scheduled to return today at noon, and until a speaker is chosen, the House cannot pass bills or even swear in its new members. Former Speaker Nancy Pelosi said last night that the Republican gridlock shows disrespect for the institution. Well, as she said, they're expected to be meeting right about now. We'll keep you updated on that situation, and we'll bring you any updates later on in the day. Well, now, let's turn our attention to that forecast. As we said at the top of the show, just a messy day out there, and it looks like a little more messy weather might be on the way. Let's check in with Devin Biggs for the latest. All right, here we go. A winter weather advisory in effect till about 5 o'clock this evening for the counties highlighted here. Small craft advisories, some areas expire at 4 o'clock. Other areas, like this corner of it, expires at 1 p.m. later this afternoon here. So we're going to be watching for some gusty winds from time to time through that can reach up around 25 miles per hour. Stirring up the ocean, there is all this active moisture here that continues to move in from the west going toward the east. So we'll keep this up today. A break will develop, maybe a little bit of snow on the way for tonight. Then another wave looks to move in just in time for the daytime tomorrow. Here's the system right here. It's a pretty large system. It's tracking in from the west going toward the east. That's bringing the snow with it. Today we'll get a little bit more on the way tonight and tomorrow. But just in time for the weekend, things will start to dry out as we get that out of here. So it's time to stall out with future cast. We have the snow, then some breaks from time to time too. Maybe once you mix further down toward the coast, we'll keep the chances for snow flurries and snow showers tonight. Then the next wave gets going as we head towards Friday at late morning to the afternoon period. it will be a quick wave moving through. Then by the time we get that out of here by Friday night, things will start to calm down a bit. Any flurries that do fall will stay further off towards the north as, as things will start to clear out just in time for Saturday. Additional snowfall. This is at least through 10 p.m. later today. Not a whole lot of additional snowfall. Maybe an inch or so further to the north. Hardly anything further down toward the south. We'll add this.
this all the way through parts of Friday where we'll have that other wave moving in. So between now and early Saturday morning, another one to maybe two inches can't be ruled out before we're all finished up with isolated areas of up to three inches in a few spots. So as for today, we're not too bad. Upper 20s are on the way. That freezing rain, sleet and snow will be possible. The northwest wind gusting up to about 25 miles per hour in a few spots at times. Moving ahead towards tonight, mid-20s do return. Snow showers, maybe some freezing drizzle mixing in from time to time. A lot of the north breeze getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour at times. As we move ahead towards tomorrow, lower 30s, this near to slightly above freezing snow showers sticking around again as that other wave continues to move in. A lot of light breeze out of the north at about 5 miles per hour in general. All right, here's a look at your extended forecast. So again, temperatures will start to warm up a little bit more just in time for Saturday. It will be partly cloudy. Highest reaching for the upper 30s. Maybe lower 40s can't be ruled out either. That will feel amazing, right? Then even more sunshine just in time for Sunday. Temperatures make a retreat down to the mid-teens or the middle 20s, I should say. will fall down to the lower teens Saturday night, actually. Middle 20s for your Sunday. Then upper teens for the low Sunday night with a, with a few more clouds Monday with a partly cloudy sky and temperatures rebounding into the mid-30s. I'm Phil Levesque president of Levesque Business Solutions. We're a family-owned main business since 1963. We're your one-stop shop for great office products at affordable rates. From copiers to office furniture to PPE, we've got it all warehoused right here in Bangor. We're your local small main business with a dedicated staff providing honest and friendly customer service, top-of-the-line tech support, and the option of in-house leasing. Let us help you get back to business. Oh, that feels so good. What a sweetheart. I'm so lucky. These socks are so soft. And her feet don't smell? These would be perfect for hunting season. Moisture wicking, odor resistant, hypoallergenic, softer than cashmere and warmer than wool. Get your alpaca socks and more at the Blue Alpaca. Feel the difference. Hey babe, can I borrow these socks? Hey, it's Eric from Green Bear 420. We've been in business since 2010 and going strong, so stop in and check us out. We specialize in glass art by over 100 local artists and even have live glass blowing. Plus, we carry incense, novelties, t-shirts, and hard-to-find items. We have tons of local products for the tie-dye wearing person in your circle of friends. Come see us at 531 Moosehead Trail in Newport. And remember, Green Bear 420, it's not just a store, it's a lifestyle. Jamar Construction Products in Bangor continues to grow to meet our customers' needs, supplying products for site work contractors, concrete contractors, and survey and safety supplies. We are proud to be the local dealer for Hilti, Valley Blades, U.S. Fabrics, and Euclid Chemical, plus so much more. Stop by and see us at 1270 Hammond Street or give us a call at 907-4491. If you dig it, pour it, plow it, fasten it, lay it, or lift it, Jamar Construction Products can help you. Have you ever seen something in the sky that you just couldn't explain? One expert says while official UFO reports are way down in Maine, there may be actually more sightings than ever. Mutual UFO Network and National UFO Reporting Center have documented unidentified flying objects for decades. In 2022, there were a combined 59 reports of UFO sightings in Maine. That's down from the 73 reported in 2021 and from the record of nearly 100 back in 2020. UFO author and researcher Nomar Slevik says the official numbers don't tell the whole story. There's actually a lot of sightings that are happening in Maine that are going unreported through official means. But sightings, if you look on social media, you'll find that they're way up. Well, Slevik stresses UFO sightings aren't necessarily extraterrestrial in nature. Things like drones and helicopters can also be unidentified particularly when flying at night. You never know what's going on up there. If you do get a video of a real UFO, though, give me a call. I'll put it on TV and we'll share it with all our neighbors. That's it for now, folks. We thank you so much for joining us at noon. All the latest news, sports and weather coming up tonight at, on ABC 7 News at 6. Until then, we hope you have a great afternoon. I never get the flu. My kids don't need more shots. I don't have time. We're all healthy. No matter how you build your excuses, the flu 
can blow your house down. I can't believe I used up all my sick time. I missed a week of school during finals. Now my baby has it because of me. The hospital? Keep your foundation strong. Vaccinate. You're watching ABC7 Bank.